data. So on my name again, Brian Steglitz, I'm the manager of water treatment services for the city of Ann Arbor. We serve about 125,000 people, um, city of Ann Arbor, parts of Sayo Township and Ann Arbor Township. Um, and our, our position um, or an approach to addressing PFAS has always been from the first um, the start is to advocate for abatement of the source um, and making sure that the polluters are responsible for removing the um, contamination from our watershed and from the environment. Um, we do think it's clearly the most cost-effective approach for dealing with this issue, um, as well as it's, we don't feel it's appropriate that our water drinking water customers should be responsible for paying for the burden of a polluter upstream who has put these contaminants into our watershed. So we've been advocating that for um, from the beginning, and we're continuing to work through um, all different channels to try to make that happen. Um, but we have not been satisfied, obviously, with the work that's been done um, in the watershed, even though there have been some um, significant headway made with some of the polluters putting in treatment at the source. So we've taken some initiatives at the plant to put in treatment um, because we feel like we owe it to our customers to make sure that we do the best that we can to um, protect public health. And I see some of our council folks um, who are in the audience, and I thank them for supporting us um, to implement the recommendations we've made and to spend some of our resources to put in this treatment. Um, we are reporting on our PFAS results every month. If you want to see what the results are for the last month, you can go to qualitywatermatters.org. And what you'll see um, in our last month of data is that all of our levels are um, non-detectable for PFAS in our drinking water. So it is in our source water, yes, but in our drinking water, um, we are able to remove it to non-detectable levels with the exception of one of the compounds that the state has identified that they could potentially regulate in the future. Um, that one has an acronym of PFHXA, um, and we found about two, between two and three parts per trillion um, in the drinking water. The, the potential or recommended um, regulatory limit for that particular compound is 400,000 parts per trillion. So that's one thing that I think is important for people to know is that all PFAS are not created equal. Um, so it's important as we're um, making investments um, because every time you're trying to remove a chemical it's going to cost money from your water supply that we're doing it wisely to protect public health. But um, achieving zero is not necessarily the best solution. Um, really? So it's something that obviously needs to be considered when we're looking at potentially regulating these compounds in the future. The other thing that we're doing is we are working with the state as a stakeholder in the regulatory development process. We've been asked to participate. Um, and it, it's really important um, from the water utilities perspective, and this is pretty much nationwide, is that the best science is used in order to develop um, appropriate regulatory um, levels. Um, there, the science for these chemicals is developing very rapidly. The media coverage and um, the political pressure to regulate is sort of, sort of moving faster than the science. So we need to make sure that we're developing flexible approaches to regulate these appropriately at the pr appropriate levels to protect public health. 